Number two, reliability, quality, safety. Number three, project management effectiveness. And a distant number four was technical performance. Because if you've got a satisfied customer, if you're safe, reliable, you know, if, they're, if it's not adequate technical performance, they're not going to be satisfied, are they? So it becomes a, a more distant concern. Step three, come up with requirements and constraints for the decision. This is, um, this is only sort of as a last resort. This is the constraints that you put on yourself on your decision-making process. So for instance, if you have uh, a need to get the system out as soon as possible, tomorrow if, if possible, maybe you might put a constraint on your decision that your language, programming language and support tools and utilities, you don't have time to self-develop anything, so anything you consider must come off the shelf. That would be a constraint on your decision-making process. However, the rest of the process really deals with issues that aren't ironclad constraints. So that, that, this is a place where you, that is all you, you consider. You may not have any. So picking alternatives based on stakeholder values. Well, first of all, if the project is large or long or integrity is an important value, you're going to be selecting from a list of statically typed languages because there just is a lot more integrity in those, where the programmer declares the, you know, the, the, the variable types and object types and so forth up front, and then that constrains the development from then on. Now, if that's not your development domain, as this quote says, you can hack things much better with dynamically typed <laughs> languages. So if you're working in that domain, then these other types of things can go on your list and may actually be higher on your list than statically typed languages. Um, lists of uh, alternatives, of course, are available all over the place. This is just representative. Developing the methodology, well, I am, I am uh, presenting a methodology to you here, which you could take as a basis, modify it, what have you, and use it. It's based on another lean technique called quality function deployment. And that is a you use a series of matrices to make a decision. Uh, you can use it for many different decisions than this kind of decision. Uh, but this is one application of it. And I'm going to show you about the matrices starting at this point. So step six, do the evaluation. Well, first of all, you develop a list of what language traits are important to you. So you talk to all your technical people, what have you. Um, you come up with, you know, what do they think is important? It doesn't have to be the right list. In other words, people can come up with strange uh, language traits. You know, it, it, it doesn't matter at this point. You just want to collect this list and condense it down again to a single list. Uh, these are some obvious ones that I think everyone here would probably agree are important. And I'm going to let Tony Hoare make the uh, argument for me that integrity is one of the most important of all possible um, language traits. A broader pr principle here is to minimize, pick language traits that help you minimize system entropy. I think those should be on the list. And the idea here is that the, 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 the most integrity the system ever has is the day that you've, you conceive of it. You have this perfect idea. It's like the platonic chair um, uh, before you ever build the chair with all of its imperfections. The only thing that you can do as a developer from that point on is screw it up. <laughs> so the idea here is you pick everything you do in, in development is to minimize that entropy of the perfection of that concept that you, begin, that you began with. And that can help you with uh, picking language traits. You rank order the list of traits from the perspective of each trait. So of each, uh, sorry, that's a misprint, of each value. So for instance, uh, remember profit was one of the values in our list in our example. So you think, well, from the perspective of profit, you know, what does that, um, you know, uh, which is more important, integrity or extensibility? You know, uh, what's more important, integrity or integrability? And so I said, you know, this again is, 
not an actual example. It's just to show you how to run the numbers. In this case, I, I said, well, integrity is strongly more important than extensibility and weakly more important than integrability and what have you. So you run the same kind of AHP that we did before, and that gives you the values in this case of integrity of, of 63%, importance, extensibility 11%, and integrability 26%. So you do that with all of your, your values, you come up with your, for each, for each of your values, you come up with a list. So here we go. From the perspective of the value profit, inter integrity is 63%, uh, extensibility is 11%, integrability is 26%, profit was 40.5% uh, importance. You do the same kind of weighted sum, and now you have a list of language traits and their weights. You know, so integrity in your total list uh, has an importance of 55% and so forth. Now you, so now you have, uh, have language traits. There's only one more step, and that is now to take the language traits and use that to help you select languages. Same sort of an approach. So from the perspective of integrity, you, you do um, an AHP for the languages. You say, okay, so which is better for integrity, Java or Ada? Java or C++? Ada or C++? And so forth. You go right down the line, and we have a winner. It's Ada. <laughs> it has nothing to do with the fact that this is an Ada conference. <laughs> All right. So let's uh, summarize the QFD process for making the language decision. So we started with the stakeholders, we prioritized them, and then we used that to, de to uh, determine the value weights. Then we bring those weights down, make that the rows, then we use that to determine the language traits, weights. We take those, and we use the language trait weights to determine the language weights. And now we have an objectively defensible choice of, of language. So repeating this, far, far too many software projects still fail. It's totally unnecessary. There's no excuse anymore. Language choice plays an important role in the success of projects. We can look to lean and systems engineering for objective, defensible ways of, of um, making decisions and getting free from the tyranny of people's opinions. I mean, that's good for everybody, even the people that normally tyrannize the other people. It's good for them that they're not able to do that anymore. Uh, we just went through a six-step lean systems engineering process for making a language selection. And the result of doing that is that the project that that's used on will have a stronger foundation for success. And I'll make one more point here. To learn more, as John mentioned earlier, to learn more about lean software development in general, there is a free article that I've written that you can get through the web, and that's the uh, connection. And that goes more into the overall lean software development process. All right, thank you.